one, we are here today to make an examiner presentation for you and Emily. I'm Shirley. I'm Harry. I'm Will. So our topic today is about social inequality problem, and we are discussing how the Chinese and American government solved this problem since 1980s. Let me first talk about the situation of the inequality problems in China and America. In modern societies, inequality problems such as gender inequality, educational inequality, and wealth gap inequality are prevailing among all countries, and people are discriminated since they have lower social status than others. For instance, people live in rural areas are poorer than those live in urban areas. Now, I will talk about the reason for why the causing of the inequality, and the first one is about the social awareness. Second one is government constitution, and the last one is about history and religion. These three comply with the, each other together and just for do the form in the people's mind and tell them what they should do and instead of what they really want. And I'm going to talk about the solutions in general. Mm, for example, the government can make some laws or some subsidies, subsidies to help those poor people, and also the government should increase the educational system. That's more solutions. And all, all of us have different, separate things. Uh, the uh, Shirley is going to talk about the education inequality in U.S. and China, and gender equality is, is the topic for uh, Emily. And um, uh, Eric is going to uh, introduce the wealth gap inequality, and I'm going to talk about corruption in China and racism problem in the U.S. So let's get it started. From my perspective of view, the educational inequality problems are fierce in recent years since the economy of rural cities are not developing well. Teachers have um, little knowledge and students may have difficulties learning knowledge. Um, also, the university entrance score line of rural cities are lower than the score lines in urban cities. In order to solve this problem, China decided to increase investment on education. It is a crucial premise of narrowing the gap among countries and schools. If we look at the government effect, the government only changes the resource allocation, and the government should um, increase the investment and give students a better future. Uh, what's more, the USA took action to solve this problem too. First, the USA um, provides service directly for people so that it can ensure people to have the same equality to education. Second, the uh, US government provides financial support for those people who live in poor areas. Although these two solutions are not very perfect, both China and America are trying their best to help people to maintain the equality of education. Next, I will talk about the gender inequality. First, in China, before the women could just only follow their husband and stay at home. But the situation of women is changing from 1980s. Firstly, the government is putting the women development in a national level. Since 1995, the government has made a work to guarantee the women rights in education, uh, participation in political field, and also in the economic activity. And secondly, the government also makes policy like providing a job training and uh, promise the loans and reducing taxes to encourage the women to be employed and start their own business. That with the guarantees of the rules and also the government policy, the, the women have more and more rights with men and they can show their talent and compete with men. The same situation is also happened in America. The US, uh, United States Agency of International Development have said that the women's development is not a part of the economy, but the core of the economy. And also in the uh, government of Obama, they are aiming to uh, eliminate the discrimination and the social inequality, and also the gender inequality. They are in their effort to expand the, uh, expand the women's position in the, pro, uh, in the political field, and also supported the women as you, oh, you can see, the both governments, the China and the U.S., have done their job, and you can see the uh, position of the uh, women is consistently improving. But there are some still some problems, like you can see in the picture, the salary gap uh, is still 
happen in uh, America. And also in China, this women is only make 75% of what men make. And there are only uh, two solutions for this. And first one is to improve the education. Education is only the way to let women know they can't be seen as empty and they should have the equal rights with men. And secondly is to provide a friendly and a positive environment for the women development. And next is Eric's part. Okay. I'm going to talk about the wealth gap inequality in China and America. According to the data that shows that the 100 richest people in China have more wealth than, than the bottom 40% of wealth um, and uh, the data also shows that the top 1% of earners in America make the 20% of the total income, while the bottom half only makes 12% of total income. This shows that these two countries are suffering from a huge income inequality. And here are some reasons. The first is per goals. Um, as we know, from 1978, the China has experienced a huge, um, very fast economic growth, and the, and according to the data is that the income of the bottom 40% increased five times at that, at that period. It seems impressive until one considers that the fact that the top 1% of, of the top 1% of people's income increased 40 times at that time. Um, so this is probably goes further accentuated the income gap. And next is about education. According to the study, that American with college degrees um, 84% more than those with high school degrees. And in China, the educational system is well developed in urban areas, but not rural areas. However, with um, the globalization and new existence of new technology, uh, more and more jobs require workers to um, have better skills to, come, uh, to operate, those, uh, operate those machines. So lots of people, lots of people lost jobs due to this reason. And next is about unfair exchange rate and job outsourcing, which related to the open economy. As we know, the price of the labor force outside America is relatively um, cheap. So the American company, which puts profit ahead of its workers, um, outsource their jobs, and many Americans lost their jobs. And that's for all reasons. Let's move, move on. So. Some measures need to be taken. First is subsidies to rural population, populations. The Chinese government has already announced its help to the rural population by abolition of taxes. It is extremely helpful because lots of workers in China Chinese rural places um, do, do some jobs related to agriculture. Second is social security leave. This strategy is very wise for government because it can increase the standard of living for their citizens. And with, like China is already considering the minimum wage as well as the medical care system. Third is educational benefits. As we know, investing to uh, education is the best way to increase the labor force and the human capital. And that's my part. Next is Will. And I'm going to talk about corruption problem in China and racism problem in the UN. So relationship-based trade, or guanxi, is a special corruption problem in China, which means uh, which basically means the abundance of formal rule bound decision. And one best example of this is house purchase in China. So in some special area, like developed area, for example, Shanghai, uh, there is a house, uh, limita uh, house purchasing limitation. And uh, some people will use their relationship with, for example, a governor who is in charge of the house purchasing to gain the opportunity to purchase the house, which is a, a which is very unfair to other uh, people in China. And uh, in order to fight against this corruption, the Chinese government introduced the anti-corruption campaign, which has a significant outcome. According to Lindy's article, the uh, corruption rate of China has uh, decreased 14% uh, in the period of 2016 and 2017. And next is racism problem in the US. So, since U.S. is a globalized country, um, racism should never be avoided in this country. And I'm going to show an example or an experience of Dr. Kaboom. Dr. Kaboom is an African-American, and he was being accused by a police officer of having a, a low firearm under his car seat, which is, tr uh, which is untrue. And he felt that the police officer, which is a white man, have re uh, prejudice based on race towards him, and uh, the pressure let him 
uh, forced him to move all of America to another country, which is a sad story. However, uh, I'm sorry. Uh, however, the U.S. government introduced a Civil Rights Act of uh, 1991, which is a, a powerful weapon uh, of legal that could help uh, people to fight against the, all the prejudice and racism problem in their life. So they have uh, enough uh, strategy of facing the problem of racism. And here are the references uh, we are using, and this is the end of our presentation. Questions, Mr. James, you like to start? Sure. Okay. Um, Eric, uh, in what way did you improve your ability, ability to work with the group as a result of this project? Um, I think it's the part of the brainstorm, brainstorming that we uh, decided this topic. And I, I thought that it's sociological, and uh, we decided what is what is sociological and we use the definition and we think some problems that existed in this society. Then we combine these problems together that we and we find that it's inequality. Um, so I think um, when brainstorming, um, our group members can divide uh, different ideas and then combine that together. And that's how I learned about um, that's how I learned about as a result of this project. Emily, while you were doing your research, um, what research stuck out at you? Something, uh, when you were doing the research, what is something that you found uh, different than what you expected? Um, when I was first researching, that I find that the difference between the salary gap between the men and women is, uh, is far from my um, estimate. And I think because I, I saw the data like, the man is made over, um, since the 1980s, the man is made over uh, 350 increase on salary, but the women, women is just made about, about 100. So I, I, and this gap is still extending. So I think this is um, what I have not seen before. Uh, also um, surprising is that there are many uh, women entrepreneurs in the international <coughs> area.
we know that the social inequality problem is a really big problem that happens everywhere in the world. So we would like to separate this uh, social inequality problem into a separate part to uh, explain to you uh, how serious the social inequality problem is and how does US and China have their own special strategy uh, towards different uh, uh, different uh, difficulties uh, under the same uh, social inequality problem. And uh, uh, should this part is mainly focused on education and uh, gender is the topic for Emily. Uh, wealth is the theme for Eric and they uh, all three of them uh, are discussing the same topic uh, in different countries. And my part, which is corruption, uh, like Guanxi corruption in China and racism in the US, uh, these two are like typical problems, social inequality problems in different countries. 